What's going on, Exa? Welcome to my Wild Strike Champion, based around the Veronastra weapon. Wild Strike is a great clearing skill, but like you can see in the video right now, the single target and shaper damage is also quite good. Champion still remains as one of the strongest, if not the strongest, melee ascendancies in the game. But anyway, let's have a look at all the items that I use for this build. The main unique item is, as I've already mentioned, the Vernastra weapon. It counts as every one-handed melee weapon type, so you can for example pick up sword, dagger and claw nodes on the tree and you will benefit from all of them. For body armor I went for a lore weave for the physical and elemental damage, but if you'd prefer more survivability over damage then use either a queen of the forest or a belly of the beast instead. For helmet I used a Starconia's head for the evasion, life and attack speed. And then I used the Shaper's Touch Gloves for the life and physical damage. And then lastly I also used a Might of the Meek Jewel and placed it where you can see in the video right now. For rares, these are stats that you're looking for. Basically you want life and resist on all of your items. Then I went for physical and elemental damage as well as a crit chance and crit multiplier wherever I could. You can get some movement speed on your boots but definitely prioritize resistance since you mostly move around with whirling blades anyway. For flasks I went for an instant life flask with immune to bleeding, a jade flask with immune to freeze, a diamond flask with immune to curses, a lion's roar and a serious promise. I would only recommend using a wise oak if you have all of your three resistances at the same value. My main gem setup I use wild strike and with wild strike I have elemental damage with attacks hypothermia, melee physical damage, ancestral call and melee splash. And then for the tougher single target bosses I switch out melee splash and ancestral call for multi strike and ruthless instead. And then in my gloves I use my auras which are herald of ash, hatred, herald of purity and then I have enlightened level 3 in there. And for movement setup I use whirling blades and with whirling blades I have faster attacks, blood magic and fortify. And then in my boots I have my defensive setup which is Castle of Gemma's Taken level 1, Immortal Call level 3, Priest Duration and Vol Haste. And then in one of my weapons I have Blasphemy, Blood Magic and Elemental Weakness. And this setup is just to put myself in low life and therefore trigger the Adrenaline buff. And then in my other weapon I have Summon Lightning Golem, Ancestral Protector and Blood Rage. For skills, these are the progressions that I went with. Basically I went for life and evasion wherever I could and then more or less all the nodes that give bonus to one handed melee weapon types as well as some elemental damage. I definitely took a softcore approach to my tree but as I don't play hardcore this worked very well for me both in terms of leveling as well as the end game content. For ascendancy I went for conquer and then worthy foe for the taunt and 100% hit chance against taunted enemies. Then I went for first to strike, last to fall for the free intimidation which is a 10% increased attack damage boost. You also get the adrenaline buff which triggers whenever you reach low life and it gives you 100% increased damage, 25% increased attack and movement speed and 10% physical damage reduction and lasts for 20 seconds. Lastly I picked up unstoppable hero which gives some damage and evasion whenever you have fortify up. For Pantheon I went for Soul of Lunaris as Major Guard for physical damage reduction as well as some increased movement speed. You also get a chance to avoid projectiles and to dodge attacks and spells. For Minor Guard I went for Soul of Gruthkull for even more physical damage reduction as well as whenever an enemy hit me they get reduced attack speed. For Bandits either help Alira or kill them all. For leveling definitely use a Tabula Rasa if you can. I leveled with Frostblade from level 1 and used that until level 28 when I switched over to Wild Strike. I combined Wild Strike with Ancestral Call and Melee Splash for clearing, as well as with Elemental Damage with Attacks and Melee Physical Damage for the damage increase. And then I also added in Hypothermia as well once I hit level 31. For the skill tree I first went for the Sword Nodes cause I leveled with Swords, but if you prefer leveling with something like Claws then just go for the Claw Nodes first instead. 
Uniques are used while leveling include the Lokton Lokaret gloves, the Black Heart rings, Astronaut's Mark circlet, Belt of the Deceiver, Red Big Sword, and the Princess Saber. The main positives of the build is that it's a good combination of both mapper and strong signatory damage. It's a very exciting and eye pleasing build to play and even if it costs some currency, it can definitely be made stronger than what you've seen in this video since I have pretty weak rares and no damage enhancements from the lab. The main negatives of the build is not being able to run elemental reflect mods. But since Wildstrike converts 100% of your physical damage to elemental damage, you can run physical reflect mods. No leech and no regeneration mods are also quite annoying, but they are definitely doable. The build does cost some currency and switching gems between maps and bosses can be quite annoying even if you don't have to do it very often. So thanks for watching Exile and hopefully I'll catch you in my next video.